Hey everyone. Alright, so after checking out White Dragon Ling yesterday, it's time to focus on Louise. And because I got so, so, so many requests regarding um, Neo Vision Awakened Lena's damage, I will very, very, very shortly touch upon her too at the end of this video. Okay, so Louise, I already mentioned that she's the worst of the two. However, there is always a caveat to that, and we'll get to that. So let's check out Louise first. In her base form, she is a D and buffer. She does a lot of things, and what things we'll check out in a second. And in a brave shift, she's either an LB finisher, or if you're using her in Clash of Wills, she is also a morale boosted chainer at chaos wave awakened frames and i will show you that right now in a very little sneak peek of her kit where we also discuss her abilities passives etc so let's take a look at the game at our favorite punching bag okay so we are back at our favorite punching bag let's check out Luisa's kit in general Alrighty, um, so Louise, I actually gave mine a little bit, I gave her, her both weapons, I, even though I was away for most of the day, because I was traveling a lot, I had enough time to get both her TMRs up to plus four. So yeah, it's a, it's a good weapon, oh, I could, I can actually show off what it does at plus four. Um, but you're gonna see this anyway in the next slide on a PowerPoint presentation. So it's 235 magic, 50 LB damage, and it increases nano machine overload uh, loads modifier by 10x. Now the interesting question is: Is it a 20x increase if you're using two of her weapons? And I believe the answer to that is yes. I actually calculated her damage with 20 axe increase from both her weapons. Rest assured, if it's only 10 axe, the results, they don't really change much. But anyway, um, her base LB. Now keep in mind, I haven't fully leveled mine yet. I'm at level 29 out of 40. But her base, level, or her base LB maxes out at 80% damage. It is magic typed damage it uses magic as your main source of a damage calculation but it uses physical killers or else this would state uh, magical damage for example it also increases lb damage by 150 at max level now keep in mind i'm only at 29 and what the the, the cool thing is it absorbs fire damage for one turn which is it's a cool feature now one of the passives um, or in general, generally speaking, if you're wearing a Trustmaster, Super Trustmaster, I got the, I got the suggestion to also include what the Trustmaster and Super Trustmaster passive does. So um, she gains guts um, if she's wearing either her Trustmaster, Super Trustmaster. Uh, she also gains um, an ability uh, which. Well, a pass, another passive that makes her restore morale for the party by 150. It's also a free care barrier for herself. She modify. Um, yeah, she gains a lot of uh, things. Here you can see the uh, gun break. And the most important part is, of, of course, the killers 100% to every type. Because innately, Without the passive of the Trustmaster, Super Trustmaster, she has only 100% to all. With it, she has 200% to all. As you can see, now she is on an Esper, obviously. Uh, I believe she's on um, it's Aquatic and Fairy. So there should be Leviathan that she's on. As you can see, it's super easy for her to gain uh, the most of it. Alright, so a few notable um, abilities or things. She has quad cast innately, which is pretty sweet. Ionic Fire Blaster. It is, as you can see, a, an ability that scales off of morale. So keep that in mind. That is why the border is different on this. Other than that, she has a few neat tricks up 
Firstly, if she can um, um, imbue fire, imperil fire by 130, she also has a 130 fire imperil. She has um, killers. Um, it is 50% initially, but 100% on the next turn for all types, by the way, as you can see. Same applies to uh, her damage reduction. It is 20% initially, 40% after one turn it, it's it's cool but it's a lot less than ling does oops that's not right and we also gain um a status cure especially in feeblements such as attack defense magic and spirit reduction and she also boosts resistance to all of those while also boosting um the stats by up to 300 as you can see Fire Foam is her Fire Absorb for the entire party. This is an ability that may or may not come in handy later down the line when Dark Vision bosses do deal fire damage. That's gonna be cool. But for now, it's it's there, it's cool, nice to have, but we don't, no, don't need it just yet. The best thing though is Incapacitate Target. Um, 135 Fire Imperil. Um, it reduces accuracy by 50%, which is, yeah, it's sweet, nice bonus. But the real kicker here is 90% spirit reduction for three turns, straight up power creep to Savvy of Souls Lightning. Amazing. So this is roll compression to the max. Whereas, for example, Van had 130 imperil to fire and 85 breaks. This is just a 90% break straight out of the gate. It's great, it's great. So yeah, uh, Luis is going to take up um, the spot of Sailor Souls Lightning in Dark Visions. All right, other than that, uh, she also has Fire Starter, which is a fire imbue to the party. And it also Im does um, a fire field. So let's check that field out. Looks pretty sweet, doesn't it? It's a 25% uh, physical and magical fire field. All right, let's brave shift Louise. Here, her Psy psionic pulsar blast is her main source of DPS outside of Clash of Wallets. And this one uh, scales, again, if you have this at level 40, um, it scales up to 160x modifier because you have to use it twice before you get the maximum modifier out of it much like the Danes um, LB modifier that you have to stack up twice to get the maximum amount of it. And soon to come Arif, not Arif, uh, sorry, Tifa and Sephiroth as well. The handy thing about her limit burst is that it also increases nano machine overload by 20x when it's max level. And nano machine overload, uh, we will get to that right now is one of her main morale damaging abilities. So Nano Machine Overload. It's an ADX base um, damaging skill, already not too shabby. And um, it scales up to 880x max. However, this is not the end of things because um, her weapons do increase the value and what's more is the LB also increases the value. So at the end of the day if you're taking the 20x from the weapons in total that is and the 20x from the LB you're looking at a an additional 920x damaging skill here which is very 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 good. I mean the rest of it is cool but we are using um, Zidane's STMR anyway, so the 200% LB damage boost, they're kind of whatever. Our next good one is uh, Neutralizing Ionic Blaster. It is a skill that has a 30x modifier and depending on your morale gauge, it scales up to 730x, which is listed down below. Super strong. And the last one is Disarming Ionic Blaster, which is also her gun in Paris, so you should always use that first when you morale chain. 
and this one scales up to 580x as can be seen you know, the cute kind of um, is in our way uh, it scales up to 580x uh, depending on your morale gauge so and the ideal rotation here is disarming disarming neutralizing and a machine overload this is what you're going to do in your morale battle fight if you want to demolish any boss all right other than that um she has just the basic stuff right um the iconic fire blaster which doesn't really do much other than dealing damage fills lb gauge for all party members though five five to ten crystals it's really cool it, i like it a lot she also has the shielding which is a 5k barrier to herself and the repairing which is an mp and hp regeneration skill so yeah ba brave shift it's kind of eh she really doesn't do much other than buffing herself mainly but in general her kid is really really focused on clash of wallets i mean it's kind of obvious she was released alongside uh, the clash of wills and she really shines in that format less so in dark visions but we'll get that to that in just a couple of minutes when we actually check out her damaging potential so that rounds up or wraps up louise's kit i hope i covered it all and if you have any questions just go ahead and ask in the comments and i will gladly answer them but for now let's get back to the powerpoint presentation okay so I hope you enjoyed that little sneak peek. Um, I'm actually planning on finally doing Clash of Wills tomorrow. Uh, I had so many things and errands to run today that I, I'm i still stuck at level 89, for example. I haven't touched Clash of Wills at all uh, ever since first day. So hmm. time, is, time is an issue for me at the moment. I don't know why, but yeah, let's move on. So, her Trustmaster and Super Trustmaster. Trustmaster is a gun, which I like, because the gun is the real kicker here. The gun itself, um, without any enhancements, it's bad, right? Uh, 175 magic, fire element attached to it. it it's, it's a bad weapon. However, once you run it through the Chronicle stuff, or Challenge of the Brave, but I'm going to call it Chronicle because it upgrades the weapon and... That is a Chronicle Battles thing, so I'm gonna call it Chronicle Weapon. And when it's at plus four, it's actually a superb weapon. It has 235 magic, 50% LB damage increase, and for uh, morale battles mainly, it also increases um, Nano Machine Overload's damage by 10x. Wow, that is pretty good. So yeah, uh, it's an amazing weapon for Louise at plus four. However, keep in mind, having it at, using it at all locks you to fire. And if you have a boss that is especially strong against fire, you're gonna have a bad time because you're gonna have to use something else. It's either going to be Faisalus's, um weapon, the gun, or you can use rods, for example, because um, Louise's passives, they don't really require you wearing any specific weapon. So that's that's a good thing about her kit too. Um, the other thing is you won't probably use the gun on other units because guns, hmm, they aren't that good in general. Alright, her Super Trust Master is a heavy armor piece which has 110 magic, 50 defense and 50 spirit. And it also provides 50% fire resistance. So in general, the um, STMR is the highest mech chest piece in the game. And it has a fire resistance on top, which is also kind of the cherry on top of things. I like it a lot. It's a superb um, piece of equipment to have. Um, units such as Elena, for example, they're gonna love this. And in general, it is an amazing a piece of equipment for everyone who can wear it and makes use of magic. Now the vision card of Louise is pretty much just as good as the attack card from Ling. It is a 115 magic card at level 10 
and the passives are uh, you gain 30% magic at 4, 20% magic at 7, plus 5 LB crystals per turn, which is which I personally like. And um, for FFBE units only at level 10, you also gain 50% LB damage. So the base stats, they are plain awesome, so to speak, already. And it's a great, it, the stats are also great for, or the passives, I should state, are also great for FFBE units such as Ibarra. Ibarra has an even easier time now reaching that 300 LB damage on her own without any tricks from Guardian of Light Sora, for example. Uh, just imagine having double Lazy Rod, for example, plus the uh, Vision Card, plus um, Wizard of Shantoru's STMR. That is already 200%. Um, LB damage and with just two materials you, you're done pretty much and have to rest up for killers and it, that way I, I feel like every magic global exclusive units that's coming out always kind of also buffs Ibarra it's crazy to think that Ibarra is still relevant so long after her release I mean it's going to be a year in a few months and she's still relevant for content I'm loving it Ibarra was the one of the best investments you could have done in the game if you played at that time. But yeah, um, the only downside to this vision card, and that also applies to Link's vision card, is that it has low magic percent. Um, 50% it, it, it may cause a little bit of trouble because uh, Louise has only 190 magic innately, if I'm not totally mistaken. So yeah, 240 with a vision card means you're gonna have to make up for this with either item world enhancements. We don't have item world up right now, so that's going to be a little bit trickier even. And the rest of it has to come either from equipment, which you ideally don't want to do, or from materia, which you also ideally don't want to do. So uh, this, this gets us into kind of a pickle but it's manageable, as you will see in a few minutes uh, from the gearing uh, outline. All right, and that also brings us to the gearing outline. Um, so the damage calculation assumptions should look very familiar to you. Uh, we are using 90% spirit break, obviously, because Louise does provide that herself. Uh, we are also using a 300% magic buff, which Louise also does herself, and all the other units do so too. 300% LB buff, um, there is no Especially with magic teams, you always have that one magic DPS that can wear the Dane's STMR because they are literally not doing anything. Ibarra is the perfect example. Ibarra is AFK for literally every turn throughout the fight. So she's, for example, an ideal target for that. Now, Louise, on the other hand, I wouldn't put the Dane's STMR on her because Louise needs to do her, uh, her stuff first in order to do maximum amount of damage. But yeah, uh, the amplifications for Dark Visions, 38% um, for Luna and Terra, 50% uh, for Cacteria, and here comes the thing with Luis. So if we are looking at a morale chaining uh, Luis, we only have 55% amplification. It's 30 from herself and 25 from her field. If we are in a Dark Visions um, environment, it's 86% amplification or 104% amplification if we are using a Wind team. The usual applies to the boss, 22.5k Spirit, 60% passive Spirit and 60% elemental resistance. The team has varying amounts of killers depending on the gearing because we don't gear towards the best case of each unit but to the worst case. In case of Louise, there is no worst case, there's only a best case scenario, so she kind of cheats at this list. Um, and we are also using a 150% killer buff to adjust for evocation. And uh, yeah, the imperils, 130 wind imperil, 135 fire imperil, which is the only logical thing, because Louise does that herself. And we're also using a 135 water imperil. Um, for example, if you're using Luna Freya, you will always pair her with Cafeteria because she has that 135 water imperil. 
We are also using Sword, Rod and Gun Imperils. Um, note here for the damage calculation. Uh, Terra uses mixed weapons. She uses her own sword and Luna Freya's STMR. That way she has the average of 25% Sword Imperil and 35% Rod Imperil. And on average this is 30%. Alright, so he's, here is Luis's build. On the one hand, I checked um, how is her Dark Vision's damage with double fire weapon or with her own TMR. And on the other hand, I checked how a rod build works on her. So that is why I gave her Dark Gambentian plus plus and Lazy Rod. There's also another build that checks for double Lazy Rod and it's stated as such in the damaging sheet you will see in a second. And this is the Morel Chaining build for this particular, um, or not this very particular um, boss we are facing right now, but in general if the boss were to be, for example, a demon. So double STMR, she has the opportunity to get dub, um, double Esper bonus stats, such as GF Extension and Dream of the Faith. So yeah, she has a lot of opportunities to gear herself up properly. And this is the competition, should look very familiar to you, there is no change at all to the um, gearing so far, this should be very familiar to you. Uh, for Vivi we are also using Steiner obviously. And here is the result. Now uh, as you can see I do want to point your attention to the morale chaining part, because that one sticks out the most. As you can see 2.5 billion chaining. Now for this I only accounted as you can see the 280, uh, 2810 modifier is only the morale boosted stuff. This does not include her base mod. As you've seen before it is also an ADX uh, mod which also gets increased um, by the weapons and DLB but I did not account for that. So technically speaking, why did I not account for that? That's the first question you're gonna ask yourself, is the damage is just going to get inflated even more. And um, the most important part here is how much does the morale chain itself deal? Because that is a single hit. That morale damage is a single hit. You can see this on the um, in the wiki where it states 7,1. And that one hit is the morale based chaining attack and this is just that one attack that I uh, counted here for. And um, that alone deals so much damage, it's absolutely crazy to think of the total package. It might, uh, it probably is going to be at 3 billion damage. And we are looking at a DV boss stats. So 22.5k spirit with 60% spirit ba um, passive. It's crazy how much damage Louise on her own deals if you can use her maximum potential morale um, gauge attack. Absolutely crazy. It even eclipses the Vivi Steiner combo. But keep in mind, this only applies if you have a full morale base, uh, morale gauge. The, the, the damage falls off rather quickly because she has 5% less mod or 5x less modifiers per percent i'm not quite sure anymore but it's the, the damage falls off rather quickly so yeah uh, another thing uh, as you can see um in the rows above um no matter how you build her whether it's a wind team whether it's one chronicle battles weapon and one lazy rod or her double chronicle blade uh, weapon she will always deal more damage than our evocation girls. And that is something to take note of. So what is the reasoning behind this? Well, the reasoning behind this is actually that neither Luna Freya nor Terra really take into account that the amplification buffs from the fields apply to them. It's a huge Peter, it's a shame that the um, field, uh, amplification fields don't apply to Luna Freya or Terra other than the LB fields obviously. And that is the reason why Terra and Luna Freya are so much behind Louise. Um, also the 160 LB mode it is 
very strong. It's double of what Terra and Luna Freya do. And you have to keep in mind that we are adjusting for killers and evocation. So if I were to take away the killers and just have her base 200% killers, Louise obviously deals only half damage of Luna Freya and Terra. And um, I know the damage spreadsheet, the so-called Dark Visions damage spreadsheet that is going around or has been around for a while, that states that Louise is only half damage of Luna Freya. Well, if you take a closer look at it, it doesn't account for killers. How a damage spreadsheet for Dark Visions does that is beyond me, to be honest, because if you're comparing units with Dark Visions in mind, you have to use real world stats and not just some, oh, let's not take in killers into account, but let's inflate numbers by um, evocation damage dealers. Well, I think it's a bad metric. The uh, maker of the D Dark Vision spreadsheet should probably adjust for that because otherwise the sheet is pretty much useless. So yeah, that is just my opinion. I don't care what others think. It's just the truth. It's a useless damage sheet if it doesn't account for um, evocation adjustment with killers. That's as easy as it is because it inflates numbers in, in favor of evocation damage dealers. Anyway, Luis damage super strong either case uh, not only is it super strong in clash of whales but it's also very very good in dark visions but yeah as you also can see her damage potential really falls off a cliff if it's not dark visions so that uh, that begs the question how does she fare in the meta and this one is a tough one. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of notes here. And um, I also said yesterday in my link uh, review that I would explain why Louise is the worst pull of the two. Now, you will probably get the gist of it once we go through this list. Um, so let's go through all the bullet points here. Without a doubt, as you've seen, Louise is the star of the show for Clash of Worlds. Nobody's going to ever get close to her for now. Um, she also deals tremendous damage in Dark Visions on Fire and Wind teams. And the 200% base killer passives make her gearing a breeze, as you've seen previously. Having the 90% Spirit Break, the 135 Fire in Peril and the 100% All Killer Party Buffs are cool features. But, and here's the point why she's the worst pull out of Ling and Louise. Her base modifications, chain mods that is, are actually, actually laughable outside of Clash of Worlds. If you take away or if you strip away the morale based damaging, she's left with 20x and 80x skills. I mean the 80x skills, they are good, but they are on cooldowns or grandes even. And the rest of it is 20x skills you never should use. This is 5 star era of damage de de dealing. I mean, yeah, she still has her 160x limit burst. That is imbuable, which is very cool and very handy. But her main role outside of Clash of Wills is LB finishing. Her supporting skills, as I've mentioned before, are also worse than those of Ling. She also has only 80% breaks outside her 90% spirit break. And she has a very short lifespan in Dark Visions. Because what is going to happen in Dark Visions is that there won't be any dedicated physical and magical stages anymore. So it will also always be physical and magical alike will be used and stages will more so depend on specific elements that you are supposed to use. Where the boss has an element he's super weak to, say ice, where the boss has like 200% ice in peril on himself, weak to ice. And that's where Louise starts fighting with physical DPS such as Sephiroth, Tifa, Sedane, our Dragoons and comparing uh, Louise to all of the men men aforementioned units, it's looking quite grim. And it's also looking quite grim for Terra and Luna Freya in that same matter. 
once you start comparing all these units to the physical DPS we have right now already, things are looking grim for magic DPS. And that is why Louise is the worst pull out of these two. Now, regarding Clash of Wills though, unless the boss is super strong against fire, Louise is going to be your best pick, obviously. But for Dark Visions, Louise may be good for this Dark Visions we're getting in two weeks, and probably the next month, so August, Dark Visions, but going forward, she's gonna be useless because you cannot put her into your comps. You will always need Tifa, you will always need Sephiroth, you will always need Zidane, and if we get Hawkeye, he will also have a spot in your team. You will probably and most likely most likely use Ling and probably a 90% defense breaker, either Venera or maybe another global exclusive unit we may or may not get until then. And that's the reason why Louise, although she looks super strong on paper, is the worst pull on that banner. Okay, so should you pull with this in mind? I would still say yes if you're focusing on Clash of Worlds. Um, she's outstanding in that format and for the time being she's also very strong in Dark Visions. But like I said, this only lasts for two more Dark Visions. So you're pulling for a unit that is going to be probably obsolete in six, six to eight weeks. Her supporting skills pale in comparison to what Link provides. And um, yeah, her damaging potential, as you've seen before, really falls off a cliff once you can't use fire or wind teams. But yeah, the elemental flexibility is a huge plus of hers, unless you are using her own super trust, uh, her own trust master that is, which locks her to fire. But yeah, she's a good pull, don't get me wrong, she's an amazing unit too, but she's not a good long term investment for Dark Visions focused players. For Clash of Worlds we really have to see what kind of immunities or resistances the next bosses are gonna have because that really decides how useful um, she's gonna be. But I feel like that just because or due to the reason that her chaining, morale chaining based skills are elementless and can be imbued, she's still gonna be probably fine all right and like i said at the beginning of the video i also do have a bonus with neovision awakened lena this is the gearing i used for her base form i checked for her damage as an lb finisher knight of salvation and yeah i mean the numbers they look they're looking quite bad i mean it's it's a 150x she doesn't really reach the high numbers of our current physical DPSs or magic DPS so to speak but she does have and I saw this a little bit late uh, into the review that she also has morale based chaining abilities and those obviously are super strong so for morale battles or clash of worlds she's a very very good chainer as well all right and that pretty much sums up the Louise plus bonus uh, Elena review for today Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, if you have any question, please go ahead and ask in the comments. I will answer as quickly as possible. And uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> have a nice rest of the evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're from. I will try to also publish my guide to Clash of Worlds today, but it is already, let me check the clock, it's already 6 o'clock p.m. in Germany and I really haven't eaten today. I got home, I did this review, so maybe I'm gonna rest for the rest of the day and do it all tomorrow. We'll see though, we'll see. But for now, this is it. See ya in the next one.